Now hear the readings for this Monday of Holy Week. Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no, no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Psalm chapter 36, verses 5 through 11. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are like the great deep. You save humans and animals alike, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you and your salvation to the upright of heart. Do not let the foot of the arrogant tread on me or the hand of the wicked drive me away. Hebrews chapter nine, verses 11 through 15. But when Christ came as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and the perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls, with the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer, sanctifies those who have been defiled so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from the dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is the meditator of a new covenant so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance because a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions under the first covenant. John chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume, but Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but he, because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used it to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. May God add a blessing to the reading of God's Word.
Good morning on this holy Monday. We please join me in prayer. Almighty, eternal God, with you is the fountain of life. In you alone do we have true life, and in you alone do we see the light. So God, we pray that your words would be fulfilled when you said in Isaiah that your servant would open the eyes of the blind. Open our eyes, God. Help us to see the world as you see. Bring us an inward healing and an outward healing. God, we lift up all those in our community this morning who are afflicted with various kinds of sickness. For those who are facing coronavirus or the flu or cancer or mental and emotional uh, pain, God, we pray for healing. Your word tells us that uh, Jesus Christ releases the captives. God, we pray that you would release us from the captivity we find ourselves in. Not this uh, physical sense of being isolated, God, but the spiritual bondage we find ourselves tangled in today. God, we pray that you would rid us of all the false beliefs we have, all the false hope, all the false idols. Help us to be transformed. On the cross, Jesus set aside his own comfort and his own safety so that the world would be changed. God, we pray that we would have the courage, that you would give us the courage to set aside our own safety and our own comfort so that we may be changed for your sake. Transform our hearts, transform our minds, free us from the lies that we hold dear, free us from the lie that we are too far from saving, and free us from the lie that we have no need of saving. This morning, God, we confess a sin of self-righteousness. Far too often do we come to you with a general sense of sinfulness, asking you for healing and salvation from our general sin. Far too little do we confess our specific sins. So today we offer specific sins to you. Racism, sexism, for any casual disregard of human life. You are the fountain of light, and it is your desire that all shall live. So God, make us, make us to be people who seek life and good for all. Release the captives, not just us, but all those who are held captive today. Held captive by oppression, held captive by addiction, held captive by false beliefs by isolation, and those today who are here physically held captive by chains and metal bars. God, we pray that everyone would be released, that you would free us inwardly and outwardly so that we might be the servants you have called us to be. Lord, we thank you for this fountain of light. We pray that we would all come to know it. This morning, we turn ourselves to you. We yield ourselves to you. Make us uncomfortable so that we may be changed this holy week. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.